one of the things that I've always noticed about homeschooling is, is that it doesn't really create problems. It reveals problems. And one of the things about actually sending your kids off to school is that it creates a scenario where you can actually hide some of the problems that you're having in your relationships and in your family mm. in the way that it operates. The, the average family in America right now, they only spend about 35 minutes to 45 minutes per day on average with their children. Welcome to the Men's Alliance podcast. Men's Alliance is a growing movement of tribes across the nation that meet weekly for rugged outdoor workouts and a real world devotion around a fire. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, join us at mensalliancetribe.com where you can find a tribe near you or come to one of our Start the Fire weekends. So check us out at mensalliancetribe.com. Now stay tuned for this great podcast. Welcome to the Men's Alliance podcast. I'm Dave Mills Goose. And with me today, special guest on the show, uh, David Nunnery. Really excited to have you here, David. Thanks for coming on. It's good to be here. Thanks for having and, me. And um, I met David a couple months ago um, down in South Carolina at a, um, what do you, I don't know what we call that, maybe like a retreat or something for hey. uh, directors of nonprofits. Uh, sure. It was, uh, it w- it was at a camp, so we'll do that. Yeah. We'll go that that direction. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was put on, you know, by um, by Mark Hancock and Trail Life USA, and he's he's been on our podcast. So great group of guys there that I I got the opportunity to meet and um, listening to David and hearing him talk about his organization and where his heart is at and his ministry. I think this is something that's just going to really resonate across um, with our listeners as well. So you know. You know what you're in for. You saw the title of the podcast, so you know this has got something to do with homeschool, right? <laughs> uh, so, David, I'd love to just uh, just start off with some of your story. Um, share with us way before you know there was teach them diligently your organization. Way before teach them diligently, how did you enter into this world of of homeschool and and feel led? to the point of starting this? Um, so we were only homeschooling for a year when we started Teach Them Diligently, which is absolutely crazy when I look back on that because, you know, you, you start the first year of homeschooling and all of the just, you know, the stuff getting used to having your children at home and not dropping them off at a school and uh, just just the, the, the difference that made. And then the next year you're starting a homeschool event. Hmm. Um, so it's crazy when I think back on it, but we actually, um, my background, uh, is in, uh, college sports marketing. Uh, I spent a lot of time going to football games, college football games, uh, basketball games. I was, uh, um, in the Rose bowl when Texas won the championship against USC, Vince Young, uh, ran across the, the goal line. Um, I, uh, we had a bunch of schools that we represented, uh, in doing their marketing and sounds like really a dream cool job. Them. That's every and, guy's dream job. I, I loved it, man. And especially in the South, you always had something to talk to guys about. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, in, in the South, everybody is, you know, uh, a bulldog or, um, you know, Clemson tiger or, you know, Gamecock or whatever. Yeah. And, um, uh, so it was a great job and I loved it, but I started getting a little antsy and I think most guys, um, that are in the business world deal with this, uh, you're humming along and then you start getting really antsy and this job that you once had that was fulfilling for you, you start thinking, man, there's gotta be more. And you start, you know, the Lord starts working on you and starts, uh, talking to you and starts urging you. And, um, I don't think he's calling everybody into the ministry, uh, in that situation, but he is wanting you to ask those questions. You know, how can I use my job to, you know, uh, uh, spread the gospel and, and, and if impact other people for me, uh, it was taking over a mission board called worldwide tent makers, which was started in 1987. 
Its uh, mission is to prepare, promote, and place self-supporting witnesses worldwide. And so I left. And um, that's that's what I started doing. But there was always this kind of discipleship focus that I had in my life. That was like a thrust of what I wanted to do. You, you gauge things according to the Great Commission. And it came from a pastor that um, uh, uh, it, it, his church we went to when we were newly married. And he would um, say stuff like, um, it is time for parents to um, look at their family and their children and think about how can they bring them to the Lord rather than think, how can I keep them out of jail? Um, and looking at it from a negative, how can I get them? How can I get them an athletic scholarship? How can I get them an athletic (laughs) scholarship is another one, but they're basically just trying to keep their kids. You know, I just want to keep my kids out of a situation where they're going to embarrass me. Yeah. And, um, bare minimum parenting, bare minimum. Yeah. And, and, rather than than reaching for the cross right how can Mm. i get my kids to jesus christ um and um so that was the viewpoint of our parenting from the time that our kids were were very young we had this view of how can i get them to jesus christ and that was the way we set up our home uh everything that we did we actually gauged under that viewpoint it was because of that pastor which to this day has an enormous impact on me and uh, we don't go to his church anymore. It was in Lilburn, Georgia. Matter of fact, he's not even pastor in that church anymore. He's retired. Um, But many of the things that he talked about still have an impact on me today. And uh, uh, weaving all this in, you know, I moved up to Lexington, Kentucky. I was working in college sports marketing. We put our kids into a private school. And uh, it was a good experience, but we were struggling to find a church that we can really be comfortable in for whatever reason. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why people struggle to find churches. Um, and and I'm not trying to say one way or the other. I'm just saying we were really struggling to find a good church to put our kids in. And it was really important to us that we had our kids in, in, in church. We wanted them around other believers and we wanted them growing. And so... After about two years of doing that, I went in to my boss and I said, uh, we're moving. And the reason why is because I can't find a church. And I'm sorry if that means that I have to quit my job. I'm going to quit my job. And uh, they said, okay, where are you, where are you, uh, where are you wanting to move to? And I told them Greenville, South Carolina, because in my mind at the time, I was going to be able to find a church that I was comfortable putting my kids in and that I would be comfortable with our families being in, our family being in, um, in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, and there is true. Even today, there is a ton. Where of really were you? Churches. Where were you right before that? In Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. And so we moved down to Greenville. And the situation is, is that uh, they, they actually said, well, as luck would have it, as amazing as this might be, we're actually talking to this school, this school, and this school, and this school, and we're willing to move you down there. And so they moved me down, and then I work here for, uh, in college sports marketing for about two or three years, and then make the decision to move out of that, started getting really uncomfortable, moved out of that, moved into uh, running Worldwide Tent Makers. Um, but I was, again, we had our kids in a private school here. We actually, one of the decision points in moving here was to put our kids in a private school here. We, we had already pinpointed the school and we were excited what, to put what them in grade it. were they uh they were in uh at that time they were my oldest was first grade okay and um he went there for two years and so he was in third grade my oldest was in third grade at this time and so i had a third grader a first grader a kindergarten and then one that was you know like 
three years old. And I was sitting in church, Sunday school, and I we had one of the pastors that came in and taught for that particular week. And I don't even remember what he taught on, to be honest with you. But he makes this statement, you reproduce who you are, but you teach what you know. And when he made that statement, it blew me away because I started thinking, man, if you reproduce who you are, I should actually want my kids around me more, not less. And that was the beginning of this process of the Lord really working on me. And it just, as things were working out, Leslie, my wife, was actually thinking about bringing the kids home for homeschooling at the time. Now, there was no trouble in the private school. We weren't angry at the teacher. Yeah, what what uh, year are we talking here? Uh, 2010. Okay. Not too long ago, but before the world lost its mind, too. <laughs> That's right. It was a very different world back then, even then, yeah. you know, and that's what, uh, 12 years ago. Yeah. Lots, um, lots happened in, in, you know, 12, 13 years. That's right. But I think it's important for people to know that there was not a, um, you know, there wasn't a catalyst, right? There wasn't this thing where I got mad at a teacher and my kids were failing. Right. Uh, they were having a struggle of reading. They, there was a bully there. None of that. It was just purely, man, the Lord just started working on us. Mm -hmm. And um, so Leslie shares with me, hey, I'm thinking about homeschooling. She was terrified. Yeah. You hear her tell a story. She really brings out this element of he's going to think I'm a complete wacko. <laughs> um, because, I don't know, uh, five years before that, we had basically made a pact with each other that we would never homeschool. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We had all kinds <laughs> Man, of humor. God's got a great <laughs> sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> He's like, like, oh look, they're making a pact. Yeah, there's there's no way. That's right. That's right. They wait until they see what I have in store. Yeah. <laughs> um and so she was terrified and um she presents the idea to me just as kind of a an initial, you know, conversation. And I say, you know what? The other day, while we were in Sunday school, and I heard the pastor say, you reproduce who you are, but you teach what you know, it really started to, to impact me in this way. And I felt like we needed to have our kids home more because we need to think about discipleship. We need to think about reproducing who we are. And so therefore, we want them around us more. We don't want them reproducing somebody else. We want them reproducing us. Right. And so we started researching. And uh, I started looking around the church and it was like, who do I want my kids to hang out with as they get older? Now, my oldest was third grade at this time. He wasn't a teenager. So who do I want my kid growing up with? Who do I want them spending time with? And everybody I looked at, they were homeschooling. You know, it was like, man, I like their kids. Mm. Oh, they're homeschoolers. Um, and it just one thing after another. Until finally we went into the, the school and we said, look, you guys have done nothing wrong. We love you. You guys have served our kids well. We appreciate you. We're bringing our kids home. Yeah. And uh, the deciding point on this, as I've mentioned before, was discipleship. That was the reason why we wanted to bring our kids home. And it went back to this element of, you know, we need to bring our kids to Jesus Christ. And how do we do that the best? And that was the way we were gauging every decision that we were making. And so that was the reason why we brought, brought our kids home. And then um, not long after that, uh, it was literally March of that school year. We, um, I am being drawn into the ministry. I'm getting really kind of anxious. You know, there must be more in my current job. And I'm like, I think the Lord's calling me into the ministry. So 
I decide to take over this um, mission board that was focused on tent making missions based off of Acts 18 called Worldwide Tent Makers. And I make that decision in, in um, March, put in a month notice, and I'm looking for ways to kind of pay the bills in the mission board because it's really hard to go into a church and say, hey, we believe in uh, um, uh, you know, promoting and placing self-supporting witnesses worldwide. Will you mind uh, you know, donating to our cause and giving us some money? And they're like, uh, wait a minute, you believe in self-supporting witnesses worldwide? And I don't want to make it sound like we never got any donations, but we didn't get enough to pay the bills. Mm. And so we started two businesses to pay the bills. And one of them was a uh, education business over in Poland uh, that was is an EU country. It was, uh, <clears throat> it was strategic. The other one was teach them diligently. And we had our first event in uh, March of 2012, and we had 1,500 families show up. Okay, so hold on. I got I to gotta back up a little bit because you said a couple things that, I mean, like we could do a whole podcast on, on these two things you mentioned, right? Yeah. You stepped out of your job, right? I mean, we could do a whole podcast about leaving a very comfortable uh, job where you're kind of – you're kind of at the top of, right? Right. Whatever your, wherever your lane is, you kind of make it to the top of that lane and, uh, and everything's comfortable. But then you mentioned like you started having this tension, like you weren't feeling very fulfilled. Like there's gotta be something more you said. Yeah. So you, you're, you're doing these two scary things all at once, right? One is leaving a comfortable job and going into ministry full time. The other one, is that decision to start homeschooling your kids. And I know that because I've been there and we've made that decision. And, um, you know, I've talked about that on previous podcasts. It's scary. And I think, I think it's, it's a lot scarier than it really is. Right. And I think guys listening to this, that maybe like they're thinking about it, they're toying with the idea. I'll just tell you, it's not that difficult. It's not that scary. When you, when you just make the leap, you realize that to, to be a homeschool family, it's not as hard as you think. You don't have to, you know, um, you don't have to instantly start making your own bread and, uh, and, and raising chickens right now. No, no, you might, uh, I haven't discussed this with you if you have chickens or not, but no, I feel like don't. there's this, there's this whole little house on the prairie mentality that scares the heck out of a lot of us, especially those of us that we're not cut out to be teachers. My wife is not cut out to be a teacher. She's like, I remember years before we did homeschool, she was like, I, I love the idea of homeschool. I love the concept, but not in my home and I'm not the teacher. Right. <laughs> and so we were like, yeah, I always kind of like you, like I looked at the kids in church who were the sharpest who I wanted my kids to be around and they were the homeschool f families and yeah. we would talk to them and we would have them over for lunch. We're like, how do you do this? Right. They'd be like, Oh, it's so easy. Blah, blah, blah. You know? And you're like, I think they're just on a different level and they make it sound easy, but it won't be easy when we try it, you know, type of thing. So, I mean, yeah. my point is you did two big scary things, right? You jumped out of your comfortable career into the ministry, put your kids in homeschool, and I think God blesses these these moves and these decisions too. I think that's another element of this, right? Your heart's in the right spot. You're trying to, you know, diligently raise your kids. Yeah, I mean, it 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 is, you know, and you, you do conjure up these visions of man. Now I got to start making all my own clothes. You know, I <laughs> I you know I, I can't go uh, I can't go shopping at the mall anymore. I got to you yeah. know I got to learn yeah. how to sew. You know, you I got to learn how butter. to grow food. Yeah, I got to <laughs> churn my own butter, you know, and um, that's kind of the vision. And yeah, I think that comes out of the 90s, you know, where there wasn't a whole lot of homeschoolers. And uh, the big problem that that back then, right, the big problem with homeschooling was what curriculum do I use? There's no, you know, what in the world? How do I find, you know, how to do this? Mm -hmm. Now you Google homeschooling. 
And it's like you're overwhelmed with information. There's more curriculum than you could think of. Everybody's giving advice. I mean, it's it's all over the place. So now it comes down to who do I listen to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had the experience of uh, we're scared to death to homeschool. And then um, uh, we bring the kids home and they're finishing by noon. And so me, as the yeah, father, right. you start thinking about, okay, are are you actually getting everything that you're supposed to be getting? You know, is is are you guys just mailing it in? Are you really doing this for real? And then we started actually doing standardized testing. And what I re- found out, what we found out out of the standardized testing is the kids were excelling. And it wasn't perfect, right? It, it, there was arguments. Uh, there was fighting. There was a situation where the kids were not turning in their their schoolwork here and there. Um, all of those things happened. But I will tell you that the thing that you got to keep in mind that what we found in homeschooling is you need to think about what your mission is. Mm. And, you know, that that's really the crux of the whole problem that families, I think, have when they start homeschooling, when they run into problems when they're homeschooling. Um, is they lose sight of the mission. And um, the mission is that you need to bring your children to Jesus Christ. And what is the best way to do that? Is the best way private school? Is it public school? Is it using tutors? Is it online video education for public school? Or is it homeschooling? And yeah. I think that the, the, the answer to that probably varies depending on the family. I think it could be all in one, you know, for some families. Um, Or it could be just, you know, mom and child sitting around the kitchen table all day long and going through the curriculum. Um, But it really comes down to the mission. And families will start homeschooling because they're trying to avoid something. They're trying to avoid the woke curriculum. They're trying to avoid the godless system. Uh, They're trying to avoid influences from teachers and other kids and, you know, all of the problems and the sin that is associated with that. They're trying to just, you know, avoid stuff. Right. You know, whatever that might be. They're running from something. That's right. Yeah. And, um, which is or, not a bad idea, <laughs> which is it's or, worth running from, <laughs> right? Yeah, you should be avoiding it. Yeah, but or they think along the lines of it's a higher form of education, right? This is going to get my child into Harvard mm. uh, quicker, you know, um, this is a, a never mind the assembly assembly line form of education that is public school that was created during the Industrial Revolution. Right. Uh, That's that's a lower form of education. We're going to do the one on one thing so that my child can really excel. Um, That's all great and it's fine. But at the end of the day, you need to keep your mission in mind. And that really needs to be the number one thrust behind what you do. And you need to make every single decision in the life of your family based off of that mission, Uh, including your job, you know, as a as a guy. Right. And where you so live. So true. Absolutely. So true. Everything. It, everything has to flow into that mission. If it doesn't flow into that mission, then you're in real danger of idolatry and idolatry sucks the life out of you and your family. Right. There's this uh, Psalm in 115 and it talks about uh, it talks about idols. And it it describes them, right? And it's amazing in the Bible when it describes idolatry. You seem, you, you're like, why would anybody do this? This is so mm. stupid, right? right. Uh, they have nose, right? But they can't breathe. They have mouths. They can't talk. They have carving, eyes. Carving some sort of an idol out of wood or, or rock That's and then right. worshiping it. That's right. You know, so you can put it in your pocket. Right. You know? it's, um, and, and so... You know, this Psalm 115, that's the way it describes it, is that it says, you know, it has a mouth, but it cannot speak. It has eyes, but it cannot see. see. And it c- continues on describing these idols. You know, they, they're they dead. But then it has this one line, and it says, those who make them become like them. And that's mm. like the key line of the entire Psalm, because that basically means that those that make idols 
they become dead like the idols, right? They get to the point where they have they can't mouth. see. Yeah, they have eyes, they can't see, they have mouths, but they can't speak. Man, that's that's pretty heavy. That's good. And, and so when you focus on anything other than Jesus Christ, right? Your mission is anything other than Jesus Christ. You're in grave danger of becoming an idolater. Right. And, so I think that's important to say, right? Nowadays, nobody's nobody's carving an idol out of wood or stone, but we have different idols today. Yeah. Right. We're still practicing idolatry. Idolatry is putting anything above Jesus Christ, above in, in anything. anything higher in your life of priority. That's idolatry. So what are what are some of today's idols that you see men and uh, families worshiping over God? Uh, 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 personalities, right? The pastor, you know, they'll mm. follow a particular person, right? They have uh, uh, particular rules or standards that they put over Jesus Christ, right? Um, and none of these things are horrible in themselves, right? Uh, Vody Bauckham is an amazing speaker. I mean, love he, yeah. he, he, I love the guy. And he, he has impacted me in a major way. But he can become an idol. And sure. he doesn't want to be an idol. That's the last thing he wants to be. Right, but that right. doesn't change the fact that some people actually make him one, right? Mm -hmm. they, they follow him everywhere he goes. Yeah, uh, they yeah. determine what is right and wrong based off of what he says. And, you know, that you have particular standards, you know, in a church, right? There's music standards, there's dress standards, there's, you know, all kinds of stuff. None of them can necessarily be horrible things. I, I'm a believer in certain kinds of standards, but you can raise them to the point where they're actually more important in your life than Jesus Christ. And at that point, it becomes an idol. Your job yeah. can become an idol. Your house can become an idol. Your children can become your an idol. Your wife can become an idol. Yeah. Um, sex can become an idol. Um, you, you name it. Homeschooling beca can become an idol, which yeah. is something that, that we actually saw really prominent. You know, I see, I see this so heavily when you said, you know, your kids... I think there's a lot of families out there that are really chasing and pursuing at full speed um, the idol of their kid's success, right? And their kid's appearance. And they're, they're the, you know, I want to do, I need to just do an entire podcast on travel sports, right? Because that's like an idol right there, right? Is when, you know, when, when people are just pouring their entire lives and all their free time and all their weekends and all their money and, and pulling all the other kids following around this one kid who's really good at something. Right. And you got to stop with any of these things we're talking about, right? You've got to stop and you've got to say, what's our mission? What is the mission of the Mills family or the nunnery family? What's our mission? And, you know, back, um, was it three and a half ish years ago, three and a half, four years ago when we were having those talks with the different homeschool families that we knew, I was talking to this one guy, a uh, great friend, men's Alliance guy. And I, I must've asked some stupid question. I don't know. I must've asked something about, you know, like, well, you know, how, how do your kids get into this or how do they get into this in homeschool? And it was a legitimate question. Like I just didn't know stuff. And, um, uh, and I never forget, like, he just looked funny at me. Like, my question didn't make sense to him. And he was like, we don't care about any of that. And I was wow. like, and he goes, he goes, our mission, and I'll never forget the way he worded this. He said, he said, we're just trying to raise good humans. He was like, that's <laughs> our goal. We're trying to raise good people, right? And, you yeah. know, he, he worded it a little different than I would, but that's what made it stick with me. He goes, we're, we're, we're not worried about any of that stuff. We're just raising good humans. Yeah. And that was his mission, right? And part of that to him, that, of course, included uh, Christian discipleship and the Great Commission. But I think that's the, that's the danger we run as dads is if we don't stop and define our family's mission, and what success looks like to us, then we're just going to chase at full speed some other mission written by somebody else that the world hands to us. 
and we're just going to pick it up and run with it. And whether we're pursuing, you know, travel sports or getting them into Harvard or violin lessons, or maybe all three at the same time, right? We can pursue a mission that ain't ours, right? And we've really sat down and just thought about it. What's the mission of my family? And I need to figure that out and write it out on paper. And then I need to change some big things to make this mission happen. Well, and we need to, we need to turn it into a question. Right. I, th- I think that's the the stage that people really miss is they never turn it into a question, right? It's okay to, you can have a really simple mission, right? Your mission yeah. is to bring your children to Jesus Christ. Well, then you need to turn that into a question. Uh, what will bring my children to Jesus Christ the best? Uh, so like when that. you're making, when you're making a decision, that's the that's the gauge that you actually that's the question that you ask. It's not how much money will you make. It's not will this give uh, my child the opportunity to start. Will this give my my child a you know a popularity. Will this um, uh, put us in a big house so that you know everybody will see. Will this mean success. Will my will will um, my will this look good on probably, Facebook. Does this look good on Facebook or Instagram? Absolutely. It it is. The question is, will this bring my children to Jesus Christ? Or That's what it. will bring my children to Jesus Christ the I best? Love it. Hey, we're going to take a quick break for a word from uh, one of our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to talk more with David, especially about how his organization, Teach Them Diligently, can help you in your journey if you're already in homeschool or you're thinking about getting into it. So stay tuned. Hey guys, are you looking to lose a few pounds, tone up your muscles, get in better shape physically? Well, let me tell you about our guy, Nick Hawkins, call sign coach from Bravo Tribe. He's the owner of Hawkins Health and Fitness, and they have a patented once and for all fat loss protocol. They can help you lose the fat, tone up the muscle without the crazy restrictive diets, or intense cardio sessions or tedious calorie tracking. Okay, check out Nick Hawkins, call sign coach at Hawkins Health and Fitness. I'm going to give you his number. Get ready to jot this down, 804-638-1386. Check out Coach Hawkins Health and Fitness. He'll help get you in shape. Okay, welcome back to the Men's Alliance podcast. Here with David Nunnery. Um founder, director of Teach Them Diligently, along with his wife, Leslie. And um, so we've been talking a lot about the the leap, the scary leap to go into homeschool and, um, and, and, and personal stories. But tell us a little bit about your organization specifically. What do they do? How can they help a family who's entering this world of homeschool? Or maybe they've even been there for a while. Yeah, it, it, so we started the um, we started the organization uh, as Teach Them Diligently, and it first started as an event. Um, and uh, we are focused on this idea of your mission. So what we want people to do is we want them to look at their home as their Jerusalem. We want them to think of it under. Uh, the, the, the filter and the idea of the great commission, because I think people actually miss that a lot. They actually, when they think about the great commission, they think about overseas, they think about, you know, uh, inner city, they think about how can I reach all these people in someplace else? They don't think about their home. Yeah. The dinner table. They don't think about the dinner table. And I think that that is the first place you need to go, right? You need to be doing something to actually um, uh, bring your children to Jesus Christ. You need to be focused on this element of how do we make, you know, Jesus Christ a regular part of the conversation here. And um, that is a big part of what we we do. And it's it's honestly surprising how big of an impact that that actually makes on on families. And what I mean by that is, is that, we get a lot of families that come to our events and they're just strung out. They're tired. They're worn out. Uh, they have felt like they are running against the current. They are fighting their kids. They, in some cases, it's a mom and she is fighting her husband. 
uh, mm. on a home schooling because the husband was never a part of this. This is something that the mom wanted to do. And it's just, you know, this is, this is her territory. And so when they walk into our event, they have all of this, this kind of weighing on them, uh, or they're just, you know, tired because they are homeschooling all day long. And it's just, you know, they're, they're tired. And what we do is we focus them. And so I can't tell you how many moms that I've talked to on the floor of the exhibit hall and have said something along the lines of, you realize that homeschooling is about discipleship. It's not about academics. It's uh, not an education choice. It is a discipleship choice. And so you need to look at this as something that you're doing for the discipleship of your kids. And you will literally see them physically, their shoulders will kind of relax and they'll kind of take a deep breath because they have been fighting this battle and it's the wrong battle. Oh man. And it's, and it's honestly sucking the life out of them. That is a, a big part of what we're about. And it seems really simple, but it makes a huge impact on families. Now, when you For come sure. into our event, man, uh, Pigeon Forge this past year, we had 10,000 people. Holy there. smokes. That's all awesome. there are. These, these are big events, right? There are 60,000 square feet of, of just exhibitor booths. There are major speakers. This come this year. We have Ben Carson and uh, Stephen Kendrick who are speaking at our events and I'm not done yet. I'm still working on, on the, the speaker list. Uh, there's like 70, 80 different speakers that come and they will talk along the lines of discipleship. But they'll get into the meat and potatoes of homeschooling. But the most popular sessions are the parenting and marriage sessions. Yeah. And I think the reason why that is, is because people come into this homeschool decision and they start homeschooling and they start overflowing into the rest of their life really quick and they're not prepared yeah. for it. Yeah. That's so true. And and I'll just interject here. You can't, um, you can't successfully improve the health of one area of your life in isolation from the other areas, right? When, if you're going to, if you're going to radically improve your health in one area, it's going to require you to pull up the health of all your other areas, right? And your relationship with your kids and your relationship with your wife, you you can't have those things out of whack and think that your kids are going to do well and, and follow Jesus. Right. You kind of, right. it's, it's kind of like all these things are tied together. I picture, you know, guys who climb mountains and they're all connected. Um, you know, it's like if one falls, man, you're pulling everybody down. But if one guy succeeds, he's pulling everybody up. And that's, that's so true for what you're talking about right now. And I love this encouragement aspect that you're giving these parents and these families at these uh, conferences. Yeah. I mean, they're getting, they're also getting these real solutions to the problems that they're having. But as you solve that problem, it starts revealing other problems. And, and one of the things that I've always noticed about homeschooling is, is that it doesn't really create problems. It reveals problems. And one of the things about actually sending your kids off to school is that it creates a scenario where you can actually hide some of the problems that you're having in your relationships and in your family mm -hmm. in the way that it operates. The, the average family in America right now, they only spend about 35 minutes to 45 minutes per day on average with their children. Even, and, even that sounds high to me. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there's a, it, I mean, if you're, if you're saying that's the average, just think that means there's a ton of families spending, you know, five to 10 minutes. That's right. To pull that down. That's right. And so you know, you can you can cover up a lot of problems when you're only spending 35 to 45 minutes with your children. It's really hard to be involved in somebody's life when you're only spending 35 to 45 minutes with them. And it's easy for them to hide stuff from you when you're only spending 35 to 45 minutes with them. Yeah. And you can't disciple somebody, right, when you're only spending that much time with them per day. And you again, you, you kind of keep thinking about this. They're spending more time at school. Yeah. Then they are sleeping in their own beds at night. It's just very difficult. And if you're going to disciple somebody, you have to have time with them. Yeah. And so homeschooling actually reveals problems. It doesn't create them. And so no, once that makes it starts perfect revealing, sense. Yeah. And once it starts revealing these problems, what do you do with that? And 
so it creates a scenario where it starts creating issues in the way the home runs and the relationship between mom and dad and their marriage. It starts, it starts revealing problems in the relationships between brothers and sisters. And then also, you know, in it between you and your children. And what are you going to do with that? You can run from it or you can work on it. And yeah, no. that's the reason, that's the reason why those, those uh, marriage and parenting sessions at our events are so popular. Oh yeah, I bet. Now your your website um, mentions something a theme on your website that I love that I want to make sure we talk about camaraderie. Talk to us about yeah. that element and how that what does that have to do? How does that relate? Industry does. Well, the the um, what we actually uh spent a lot of time talking about and one of the things that actually comes out of our events is and, and really our membership and most of the things that we do that people don't even realize until they get there is that like when you're homeschooling you're a little you're you you're different right your 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 views and the way you see the world is different You've stepped from most off people of that are cultures around you. conveyor belt and so that's Exactly right. And it's even true in your own churches, right? You're going to be a little different than everybody who's in your church. Um, and um, when you come into our event, suddenly you're in the room with thousands of yeah. other people that are just like you. They have the same views of the world that you do. They have the same mission that you have. They have the same things that they're striving for. In some cases, there's a lot of people with the same issues. There's a lot of people that have dealt with the same issues and have gotten on the other side of it. And so this camaraderie is incredibly powerful because it it creates this scenario where you belong. And um it it's it's and it is wrapped around Christ. And so the connection that you're having with these people is even stronger because of that. And so this camaraderie element is a really powerful thing. Uh, we have a lot of families that actually live on different sides of the, the U.S. And they make a plan to get back together at our event every single year. And so they talk, you know, electronically or they're sending letters or whatever. We've had pen pals like that as well. And all year long and then they come yeah. together at the event um and so the camaraderie element is really powerful we've also got a membership that we call teach them diligently 365. the membership is an audio archive of every single session that has ever been given at a teach them diligently event going back to the first event in 2012. and so you have this incredible resource and archive of like you know literally every single problem that you can have you can search and you can see it right there and it, it's searchable. The archive is searchable and it's broken down by subject matter. But several years ago, we also added in messaging and brought in a mobile app. And then we also brought in, you know, courses and, and other things into the membership. And it really leveled up the membership in a big way because talking about community, these people are talking constantly. Uh, and they are, okay, I'm having this particular problem with my son. He's struggling in this particular area. Does anybody struggle with this? And people start answering back. Hey, this is what I think. Okay. What do you think about this curriculum? People will start answering back. Um, and, and they'll talk about the successes. They'll talk about all the different things that are going on Yeah. and that's in the membership. And it's gotten to a point where a lot of our members and we have 1100 members, uh, a lot of the members actually don't even go to the sessions when they come to yeah. our event. They just hang out. They come to the event and they just hang out together. Um, and so that's another thing that is actually accomplished through the event. And another thing that we offer to try to help people with this element of what is your mission? We teach you what the mission is. We teach you how to stay on the mission. And then we actually give you a venue and an opportunity to get other people that I have the same that. mission and that you have. And in Men's Alliance, we call that coming out of isolation and finding your tribe, right? And I think that yeah. that's true for, for men. Yeah. It's also true for families, right? So, guys, if you feel like your family is is on this 
unique mission um, and you feel like you're the weirdos, uh, you just got to find your tribe, right? You got to surround yourself with some <laughs> like-minded Christian warrior families that are on the same path that you're on. And this is one way you can go find them, right? You can go to one of these teach them diligently yeah. homeschool conferences and suddenly you're not in isolation anymore. And like, like David said, you know, you're going to connect with thousands of these other families around the, around the country that you can stay in touch with throughout the year. And that's just, you know, a tremendous source of encouragement, right? No, nobody wants to feel like they're fighting alone. So I love what you're doing there. Now you knew that your wife just wrote a book, right? Yeah, she did. And um, so a lot of what we offer is also for the men, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to reach out to the entire family. And so we'll actually have information, we'll have resources, we'll have uh, sessions that uh, are at the event specifically for the men. We do a men's breakfast on, on Saturday morning. But recently, we also have a podcast. It's called Homeschooling Families. Uh, that we would love for your people to tune into men want to get involved. Right. And they don't know how to get involved. They, they, a lot of cases they're going off to work every single day and, um, uh, they, they are, are struggling to find ways yeah. that they can get involved. They come home also, they see their wife and she's kind of tired. She's been teaching all day long. She's been dealing with the kids and then she's like, how can I help my wife? And uh, the best answer, I mean, I've actually been asked this question by uh, our keynote speakers. Uh, I remember David and Jason Benham, the Benham brothers. Um, I went up to Charlotte and uh, that was one of the first questions that they asked was, how can I get him more involved with the homeschooling process um, that, that, you know, that is going on in my family? We've made this decision. Um, what do I do? You know, should I teach math? What's my best subject right. for me to, to teach? Or um, what is, uh, uh, you know, do I read it loud? Do I read all the books out loud? What, what should I do? And the, the main answer to that question is really two things. The first thing is mission. It's that it's really um, on the guy. Yeah, to make sure that you, you have a mission, and you steer. And that you, not only yeah. that you you have a mission, you have the right mission. Um, and I'm not saying that you you come up with the mission on your own. I'm saying that you make sure that there is a mission. And so, yeah, you steer. You spend the time with your wife. You talk to her. You <laughs> engage in it in this way. You ask the right questions. Um, when she comes to you and she says, uh, I'm thinking about using this curriculum. What do yeah. you think? You don't answer. Hey, darling, I trust you. You, you do whatever you think we should be doing. And, and you may be answering in that way because you think that you're doing something good for your wife. You're, you're telling her that you trust her. And then she gets angry at you. Well, she wants you involved. You need to actually be asking her questions. Now, how does this curriculum fulfill the mission that we set out? What is better about this curriculum in terms of the mission that we've set out? Um, you, you are very focused on that. When she gets worn out, you say, okay, you know, what happened today? How can I help? Um, did you feel like that you came off of the mission that we've set out? How did we come off the mission? How can I help you come back on the mission? Or, you know, maybe you just need time to just relax because of the mission. And I take a load tonight so that you can collect your thoughts and be ready to go tomorrow because we have this mission that we're going for together. You are focused on the mission and the vision of what's going on in the family. And you make sure that everything stays on that mission. Um, that is probably the number one thing that you can do in, in, in being the, the man, the father in a homeschool family Yeah, is you make sure that everything stays on that mission. You make sure that you have the right mission because the current of the world is going to try to draw your family off into 
some sort of a distraction that very likely could turn into some level of an, an idol. And you have to help everything stay on track. The second thing that you can do is you can love your wife. You know, um, you know, Ephesians, right? Uh, husbands love your wives. Well, the section in that chapter on husbands love your wives is a whole lot longer than the section that is on wife submit to your husbands. And I think the reason why that is because there's a whole lot more at stake in the husband loving their wife than uh, the wife submitting to the husband. All right. So uh, we've had some technical issues. We got to restart and um, we're, we're, we're back. So I know you were, you were in the middle of a thought, uh, you know, talking about how the dad needs to play an important role, right? It's not the thing you just outsource and say, here you go, wife, make it happen. Right. We've got to stay engaged. We've got to steer the mission and um, and be engaged. Right. And you were talking about how the men at your homeschool conferences, they have a major need to connect too with other yeah. with other men doing this, with other dads doing this. Yes. I mean, they, you know, a lot of men, they, they want to engage, but they don't know how. And then there's that group that actually look at it as this is the the world of my wife, this is, this is her thing. You know, I got my thing and she's got her thing. So this is all her. And so, um, they, the group that really wants to engage, many of them don't know how to engage. Right. And when they think about how am I going to engage, they think about what class can I teach or, um, what book can I read out loud to my kids? <clears throat> or who can I help with homework? And the problem there is that they are still thinking about homeschooling as an education decision. They only think of it as an education thing. They don't think about it as a kind of missional thing that they're doing. Yeah. And the answer to the question of what can I do with my children or what can, how can I be more involved in homeschooling is you can set the mission. You can make sure that you have a mission, that you can make sure that you have the right mission. And that is massive for your wife because um, she is listening to in-laws. She is listening to Instagram. She is listening to other moms and other families at the co-op. She's listening to other, you know, the church. She's listening to the children. She's hearing all of them. And in a lot of cases, she's wrestling against this. And what yeah. she needs is, is she needs help staying on mission. And yeah. she needs to actually have conversations regarding the mission and being able to kind of filter what she allows in and what she doesn't based off of this mission. And so that's the number one thing that you can do is, is that you can actually make sure that the mission is the right one and that everybody is staying on task with this mission. And that you're actually, if you think about homeschooling as a discipleship thing, well, now you're no longer as the dad in a situation of what do I do? Because now discipleship, man, you know, you know, you know what to do with discipleship. You know, yeah. you need to pray with your kids. You know, you need to read the Bible with them. Yeah, you know. that's what I was going to say is why don't you lead the Bible class, right? Lead a <laughs> devotion, right? Lead a devotion. Uh, it's not as scary and overwhelming as, as you think, um, you know, your kids know you're not perfect already and they know you're not, you know, um, a PhD theologian, just walk them through some Bible studies, right? Just say, Hey, we're going to go through the book of Genesis together, or we're going to go through the book of John together. And you just gather them around and you just read a chapter. It's, it's so easy, but I think it's so intimidating when you've never done it. And then as soon as you do it, it instantly, um, is demystified. You're like, I just led a family devotion and yeah. it wasn't hard and it was actually kind of fun and they were actually kind of engaged and right. And, and dads, you can lead, a, you can lead a Bible devotion. You can lead PE, take them out in the yard and do some burpees and <laughs> race them to the stop sign. Right. I've also taken my kids outside and taught them how to change the tire. Right. And yeah. you just sit back, 
You just sit back for 10 minutes with your cup of coffee while they try to figure out where the jack is and how to get to it, right? <laughs> and you just turn it into a lesson, right? I bet there's a manual in the glove compartment that probably tells us this, right? Who thinks they can find that, right? <laughs> so you just, I think that there's so many great teaching opportunities um, that are easy, right? That are, you don't have to just teach, um, you know, life science. You don't have to teach uh, chemistry. You don't have to teach algebra. You can teach so much else. And, you know, I love that line that you said at the beginning, and you'll have to help me remember this, but right, like they become who you are. Yeah, you, you reproduce who you are, but you, you teach reproduce you who you are. Yeah. And I love that. And, you, you know, you said something else, too, that I wanted to come back to is like, it doesn't take as much time at homeschool, right? It's not yeah. like an eight to three thing. And this is something we noticed right off the bat, too, is um, there is so, so much time wasted in public schools. They're, they're, in, they're waiting in lines all day. They're waiting in line. They're waiting for the class to quiet down. They're walking from one room to another. That the amount of work that they actually do can probably be knocked out every day in two hours. And it's like your kids are going to sit down and they're going to knock out the lessons and they're going to be like, we're done, right? And you, you can have so much more fun doing other things and, you know, we have one right now in public school. We have one in a private Christian school, and we have one in homeschool. Mm. And wow. um, two years ago, we had three in, in homeschool and one in public school, right? So we, we've seen the whole gamut of this and tailored, you know, what each kid needs. And, you know, I'll just tell you guys, you know, if you've got a son, especially, but this goes for some girls too, but if you've got a son who is healthy, energetic, always in trouble for talking too much, ADD kid, I think homeschool is the way to go, right? Because you're going to always be frustrated and the teachers are going to be frustrated and your kid is going to be frustrated when you're trying to cram them into this mold that they do not fit in, right? And I had a, I had a, me and my wife, we had a conference one time um, at my son's middle school with all of his teachers. It was like the ultimate parent teacher conference. They called us in for every subject at the same time. Wow. And all of his teachers were sitting around this table and it was just me and my wife. And they were like, just going on and on about what a great kid he is. And they were like, we love him, and he's so awesome, and he's funny, and he's respectful, and he's kind, and he's helping other kids. So they, they loved him. Everybody agreed. But they were like, but he will not sit still, and he will not be quiet. And, 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 and I just remember looking at him and saying, but not to be rude, but you guys all went to college to learn how to teach, right? Like, don't you have something in your tool bag? to to do can't you help can't you help him you know why are you talking to me y'all are the professional teachers can't you do something and they said we could but we don't have the time to stop and focus on one kid they said we have to keep moving we have to stay on schedule we have you know standardized tests we have programs this train does not slow down for a kid and that was a huge part of our decision too. We're like, holy cow, you know, uh, we're take we're we're getting off your train, <laughs> right? Yeah. And and we've seen we've seen him thrive, and now he's in a really great, uh, pretty large co op, right? So he's got all the friends. Um, my wife's not teaching anything, like was her big fear. Right. He's in a, he's in a great co-op with people that specialize in those different subjects. And uh, and every year we give him the, the option to go to whatever school he wants. Like, do you want to go to public school? Do you want to go to private school or do you want to keep doing what you're doing? And for the past three years, he's like, oh, this is the best. I'm not changing. Yeah. Well, he recognizes it. He's 
you know, and, and he's seeing the train, right? I mean, that's kind of this assembly line element. And what do they do on assembly lines is they make a lot of the same thing. You know, you think about Henry Ford and the Model T, you know, they had one color, you know, one design, yeah. one, you know, and it, he said, that's you can it. have a, you can have a car of any color you want, as long as it's black. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's, that's really what you're talking about when you're talking about a typical classroom education right. is that it's an assembly line and um, it, it, you know, variety doesn't really lend itself, you know, customization doesn't really lend itself to an assembly line scenario. And that's right. So, um, it, it's, it truly is. And I hear this story all the time. There are, you know, for guys, classroom education is the worst and it is so difficult. Mark Hancock talks about classroom education all the time yeah. in his sessions, you know, at our events. And it, it is very difficult. But yeah. you also have to think about this in terms of, you know, um, what's my mission? Right. right. That that is really at the end of the day, that's what you're talking about. And and when you are on a sports team or you are uh, uh, wanting to get into the Olympics or you're wanting to try to achieve anything. Um, if you want to be a pro athlete, it consumes you. Yeah. It is it, it is what you 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 revolve your life around. You know, will this make me a better ball player? Will this make me run faster? Will it make me, you know, help me to to jump higher? And it impacts who you date, who you marry, what you eat, when you get up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, where you live, everything you do. That's that that um, uh, mission of 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 you know getting becoming a pro athlete getting into the Olympics, doing whatever, it consumes you to the point where it dominates your life. And that's really kind of what I'm talking about when you're talking about bringing your children to Jesus Christ. That's got to be the mission. And you have to look at everything from that standpoint. And um, if you don't, then you get off track so easy. And the mission is not to be a homeschooler. The mission is to bring your children to Jesus Christ. That's right. The, the case that I have made and that I feel like you're making is that, you know, if you're thinking about education choices um, and you put them side by side and you line them up from just the smell test, just from a long distance view, homeschooling seems like it's the best option because it maximizes your time with your children. And you're the one that's the discipler that, it, that God has put into their life to be the discipler. And so it maximizes your time with them. Um, it gives you the opportunity to customize the education for whatever their needs, wants, and talents are. And, and really their demeanor, right? Like your son uh, and like a lot of young people, my oldest was not an academic. He could not sit still. He was a basketball player. And mm -hmm. to this day, He's constantly coming out of his room and just wanting to talk to me. And it's just, it's a constant thing. Um, and so, so many guys deal with that. And so when you look at it just from that point of view, homeschooling is the best option, but then you kind of get into the individual families and it's like, okay, what kind of homeschooling are you going to do? Maybe you make the decision to homeschool one year and the next year you send them to a private school and then maybe the next year you send them to a public school, but you're still gauging everything right? based off of this mission, not, you know, will they be popular? Will they be socialized? Are they going to get into Harvard? You know, all, That's right. all of it. It's what's your mission? That's right. And um, I, I'm confident that if you look at, for most families, if you look at the world that you're in and you look at what your mission is and you gauge the education choices based off of what your mission is, I'm convinced that more than half of the families out there would be homeschooling. Maybe more. Yeah. It's not, and you know, there's, for everybody there's something there. else that you kind of alluded to at the beginning here. You kind of mentioned a little bit, but I just want to just, we just need to clearly say this as well. 
the public schools are getting evil, right? They are. they are becoming increasingly evil, right? And I mean that word, right? Evil is the evil is the absence of good. That's what evil is, right? And when you remove good, and God is the standard of good. So when you remove God from something, you are removing the standard by which good is measured. It's like removing the heat from something. It's going to get cold, right? Cold isn't a thing. Cold is the absence of heat. Dark isn't a thing. It's the absence of light. Evil isn't a thing. It's the absence of good. That's what we are seeing happen in public schools. And, you know, in Men's Alliance, we talk a lot about uh, becoming barbarians, right? And we have shirts that say barbarian. And when we talk about barbarian, we're talking about Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world. And that's really what a barbarian is. A barbarian, whether it was, you know, the the term was first used by the Greeks and then it was by the Romans, and it always describes a person who does not conform or fit into the prevailing culture, Hmm. right? So if you weren't Greek, you were a barbarian. If you weren't a Roman citizen, you were a barbarian. And we live in a time right now where I don't want to conform to this culture. I want to be a barbarian. And one of the most barbaric things you can do in this culture right now is homeschool, <laughs> right? That's how you don't conform to this world. That's how you swim against the current, right? You want to you wanna go with the flow and assimilate to this culture? I'll tell you, step one is uh, put your kids in public school and then take your hands off the wheel, right? Now, I know you can, I mean, like, I'm not against public school. I've got one in public school. And I've got another one that graduated from public school. So you can do it if you remain really diligent talking with them every day. It can be done. I'm doing it. But you want to really go with the flow and become part of this culture and, and, and not be a barbarian, you just put them in public school and take your hand off the wheel, right? And in a few years of that, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be shocked when they come home from state university, whatever, and say, dad, I'm not a Christian anymore. I'm an atheist. Right. And here's my pronouns. Don't be shocked when that happens. Cause that's what you're setting yourself up for. And I highly recommend tribesmen. You're listening to this podcast. You need to take a good hard look at what your mission is. And it probably should involve homeschool or private school, you got to get your kids out of this evil environment because you can't put them in this evil environment for 12 to 16 years and think that they're not going to get that stink on them, right? It's going to happen. So guys, you look at this as from the perspective of you're the sheepdog of your family. You are the sheepdog of your family, right? And your kids are the sheep. Right. And, and honestly, the public school system, the state university system, man, that that's the wolves. Right. And so you want to throw them to the wolves. You better be preparing them. You better be training them. You better be teaching them, uh, for that. And they can still make it right. But how much better to just keep them away from the wolves in the first place. That's right. Absolutely. And, you know, if you bring your children home, you know, don't feel the pressure to recreate the education system, like bring school home. Great point. You, know, you don't need to, um, uh, you, you, you don't need to have defined class periods, right? In some yep. cases, there's even homeschoolers out there, and I know this is a radical idea, but it works, it, it, especially in some families, but there are some some families that don't even grade in elementary school. They don't even give grades. Oh, totally. Yeah, grades yeah. don't matter until high school. That's right. And so, <laughs> and, and when I tell people that, they're like, "What? You can it, It's <laughs> you know, it it depends. Certainly, it depends. But you don't have to. You don't have to do it. And it in in the grades are not necessarily a a um. Uh, a sign of them actually learning anything. Uh, So you need to look at that. You know, you don't feel the pressure to bring school home. That's a great point. You're not recreating there. You're building something totally new. And, you know, one of those families that really helped guide us when we started 
the homeschool journey was they told us because we asked so many dumb questions like that like how do we grade their 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 work and uh they said listen you actually need to go through a period of de-schooling that's right and, and um and we took a couple months i don't remember <laughs> now maybe like two three months and we de-schooled right because you've got to deprogram all that craziness that they've been getting and because as soon as you you start homeschool you're going to have that natural tendency to try to recreate school right and you don't want to do that you want to de-school deprogram yourself and you're going to build something totally new totally better based off of your family right it's going to operate yep. the way and in, in the routines and the in the cadence of your family and you're going to allow that that to develop and it's not a hard thing so i don't want to make this sound like that it's a super hard thing to recreate something new but don't feel the pressure to bring school home because that process of actually trying to recreate what they've always done at school it becomes a really painful process when you bring that home because you're not you know you're 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 not this professional educator and you don't need to be the professional educator and the way they're doing school in the classroom probably isn't working in a lot of cases as well as you think it is. That's right. If you're going to recreate something, don't, don't recreate them. Yeah. Copy that. Yeah. You don't need to, you know? And so we've actually uh, written this book that is called heart school. And the idea is, is that it's missional homeschooling. And so your focus is to reach the heart of your children. And our view, actually, and the view that we actually uh, uh, talk about in the book and really at our events, and this is, it, this is something that we've kind of condensed down so that people can understand what te- makes Teach Them Diligently tick, is this idea that if you reach their heart, you're going to get their mind. And how do you reach their heart and how do you set up this missional homeschool to actually be able to have a greater impact for your children? for the gospel and then actually have the gospel ripple out from your home. I mean, at the end of the day, that is really what Ephesians 5 is about. Ephesians 5 is about how do you create a home that seems so unique that the gospel actually ripples out from it and it stands out. Everybody that looks at it goes, man, something is different about them. Yeah. And that's the, that's what we're trying to talk about is that how do you actually set your home up as a launch pad for the gospel? How do you set this up so that your home is your Jerusalem and this is your main focus? You are discipling your kids and you are equipping them to do whatever God has for them in the future, to impact the world. And so the education side of this comes into play when you think about it as equipping your children to be able to leverage their talents for Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so that's what heart school is about. I love and it. Now, is it, has, is it out and available? Is it on Amazon? Yeah. All right. It, well, is we will... on, it is not on Amazon. Okay. Where we do we get it? Teach them diligently.net slash uh, book. Okay. Teach them diligently. Uh, dot net slash book we will put that link in these show notes so if you're listening to this and you're driving don't try to write this down (laughs) it's in the show notes we're going to link it so you can get this book and it'll take you to the teach them diligently website and get you connected there um when's your next conference do you do you have one we the next one is in the spring uh we uh we're actually going to be in pigeon forge tennessee uh may 2nd to the 4th and Great. then we're going to Branson, Missouri, uh, May 16th to the 18th. And so those are our next two events that we're going to be doing. Uh, and uh, again, Ben Carson uh, is keynoting at both events. Stephen Kendrick of the Kendrick Brothers of, uh, you know, uh, a Fireproof, Courageous. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, he's going to be keynoting in Pigeon Forge. And Very we cool. Have numerous other uh major homeschool family speakers and then we have people that are just going to speak into the nuts and bolts of homeschooling which gets into you know hey uh my child doesn't like math what do i do you know that that is something that we will address um 
And so that is in May, is in May of 2024. That is and those awesome. are for sale right now. Okay, great. Well, we were going to link this stuff in the show notes. And I'll tell you what, David, I think this might be the longest Men's Alliance podcast we've done. Oh, I, I, I right. think so. I'm looking at this and I'm like, I think this is, and I think that's awesome because this is the most important topic, right? We're talking about discipling your kids and yeah. setting the mission statement for your family that's going to literally dictate everything you do around that. Everything you do as a family is going to and should revolve around what your mission statement is. So such an important topic worth every minute of this podcast, of this conversation. Uh, David, thank you so much. David Nunnery, teach them diligently and you're, you're, you're helping families, you're encouraging them, you're connecting them, you're bringing these, these awesome homeschool families out of isolation, connecting them with each other, creating this great network, giving them resources. So love what you're doing. Glad God uh, intersected our paths. Yeah, me too. And uh, thank you for your time. And uh, it's been great chatting with you. Hope to see you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I appreciate you. And I'm glad that uh, we crossed paths as well. It's uh, great getting to know you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Men's Alliance podcast. We hope to see you in one of our tribes or at one of our unforgettable weekend experiences. So join us at mensalliancetribe.com. Thank <laughs> you.